What is good to the family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I'm going to be talking about SPY, Tesla, the QQQ, and many tickers out there. I'm going to break down what's going on with the overall market and how this could affect us as well. What's happening with the Fed as we have so much data coming out and all the data that's coming out for the week as I will break down how it may affect the markets. Before I begin the dab about all this information and talk about all of this data coming out for tomorrow and beyond, let me just mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I am not a financial planner. Make sure you take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. And finally, don't forget about the Moomoo link, which is down below in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo and put in 100 bucks into the account, you are guaranteed 5 free stocks plus a $100 cash reward. Not for friends very soon. Check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. All right, guys, looking at SPY, as you know, SPY had this channel it was stuck in for quite a while, going back and forth and back and forth between 430, this like 429 to 430 resistance, and about support around 426. It was stuck here for almost a week, just going back and forth and back and forth. And we finally got this break to the upside on Friday, but the market failed to hold 430. But it is still in a pretty decent place. It was just barely below 430. We didn't really hold it by the time we closed, but overall, still pretty, pretty nice. Now, as the market is holding up at these high levels, it looks very nice from a technical standpoint. I mean, we're about to, to get to this like monthly bullish cross on the PPO. And yes, the market looks strong. But in order for the market to remain strong like this, in order for the market to pump more, we're going to need some good data and we're going to need the Fed to pause. Because if the opposite happens, as I mentioned yesterday, the market could still see a rug pull. So you have to be very careful, got to be watching out, and you have to be open-minded despite all of that. And that's why I keep on stressing the importance of confirmation on the charts. But what is the news saying about the markets, right? The news is coming out and saying that if the Fed is hawkish, it could kill a baby bull market rally in the U.S. stocks. And I do agree with that. I wouldn't call this a baby bull market rally. And as I said before, I don't care if it's a bull market, you know, a bear market, a kangaroo market, a koala market. Who cares what terms people are trying to use to describe this? If anything, let's just look at the charts and look at what the trend tells us. Now, at the same time, there's still other pieces of news coming out saying that the market has exited the longest bear market since 1948. What stock market history says about what happens next? So once again, there's a lot of talk about us being in a bull market. I really don't care, but it is helping to fuel the upwards pressure in this market as the market is still holding up. But you have to remember that the market's also expecting and pumping through the expectation that the Fed is going to pause. There's a 70% chance the Fed pauses in the eyes of the market and a 30% chance that the market uh, ends up seeing the Fed continuing to raise rates. Is the Fed going to do this? I don't really know. And because I don't know, I'm going to position myself to not take man, uh, excuse me, not take massive risks. I'm not going to try to risk, you know, too much money. I'm not going to hold for too long uh, between very big days. And I think it's very important to be careful. Now, for earnings, we have almost nothing big, just like Oracle and just a couple of others like Adobe. Nothing too big is coming out for the week. But here's what you've got to be watching for. For tomorrow, we have consumer inflationary expectations at 11 o'clock a.m. That's going to be very important. Make sure you watch that carefully. And I think the market may see some very sideways action, maybe a little bit of downside, tiny bit of downside, very, very choppy price action until this. So for the first hour and a half, I'm, in, I'm kind of like leaning in that direction. And then we're going to get a very, very big reaction to this data. We want the expectations to be low, not high. The forecast is 4.2%. So let's hope for that. And if the expectations are too high, the market may slow down. If the expectations are just decent, the market may hold up nicely. So watch that carefully. 11 a.m. tomorrow. For the later days of the week, we have CPI on Tuesday, one hour before the market opens. Then we have PPI one hour before the market opens on Wednesday. And all this will affect the Fed's policies because later on on Wednesday this week, we have the FOMC meeting and the interest rate hike decision. Just to clarify in case there's confusion. The rate hike decision is separate from the meeting. They're two different things. The decision comes out at 11 o'clock a.m. Uh, Pacific time, which is 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. So at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, watch for the interest rate hike decision to come out on the news. All that means is the news is going to say, oh, the Fed had paused or the Fed didn't pause and they gave us like a rate hike. That's all that is. Then the actual meeting starts at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. Okay. This is when Jerome Powell comes up with his microphone on, in his suit and tie and he just starts speaking. 
that's when you have to be watching for crazy volatility in the markets. So please be ready. If there's news about the Fed pausing, the market's going to rip to the upside. We're going to see a bull rally. The market's going to explode. If not, the market's going to get a rug pull. So be very careful. For Thursday, we have lots of jobs numbers coming out, lots of data from the Fed, manufacturing data. And for Friday, we have OPEX with many Fed speakers. So very important Friday. We also have the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Report coming out. That's going to be very important. So lots of important data for Friday, plus OPEX options expiration. So tons of options are expiring on Friday, millions and millions of them. Uh, it's going to be very important. Make sure you're ready for this entire week. It's going to be huge. But before we talk more about like Tuesday and Friday, we got to focus on just Monday. Monday just has consumer inflationary expectations. If it's too high, harder than the, what the forecast is, the market's going to get a rug pull. It doesn't have to be like a huge one, just like a, a minor one. A small pullback will come because of this. If the forecast or, or, or if we're like well uh, below the forecast and we're expecting inflation to slow down a bit, not be too bad. If it's as expected, the market may rip and continue to hold up. So it all depends on the data coming out at 11. Make sure you're ready for that. Now let's talk about some charts before I end the video. Uh, for SPY, we're just stuck between support and resistance. We're trying to break resistance around the 430 area. If it, if it breaks 430 to 430.25, you could expect this thing to get closer to the mid 430s and potentially 431. If we get above 430, we're going to be watching it uh, move around the 431s. 431 to 432 in essence, has a lot of resistance. The zone I talked about previously was around a 431.22 to 431.76, but it could go a little higher to about 432, just under that. So this entire 431 to 432 zone has resistance. Break that, we're going to see 433. Break that, 435 is going to come. Those are the next historical resistance levels. If we come down, first off, we have to remain below 430. The next support is going to be 429. Then after that, it's going to come to where the 50 EMA happens to be just around this uh, 428.67 area, which is where the 50 EMA happens to be. And if that fails, it's going to come down to 428.5, then 427.5, followed by 426. The 426 zone, that's where you have major support. The most important support is going to be 426 flat. All right. Don't forget we had this range on SPY for the last like week. Basically, it's going back and forth and back and forth. To make a very big move to the downside, you have to break below 426. So far, we're nowhere close to that. And to make a very big move to the upside, we got to break and hold 432. If it keeps going, you know, we have 433, 435, then potentially it's getting closer to 440. But let's not talk about 440 just yet. We got to wait for confirmation and watch it carefully. Tomorrow, I'm anticipating very sideways price action, maybe a bit of a cool off too in the morning. It really depends on how we look in the pre market. And then we're going to get a big reaction to the data. It's going to be a big move, so make sure you're ready for that. For Tesla, it looks to me like we're kind of in the middle on Tesla. Let me just close some of these support and resistance levels. I use those, those for like scalping, by the way. So I do apologize how, if it looked kind of messy. Let me exclude the extended hours and show you something. Basically, Tesla has this gap. We're close to a bearish cross in the PPO. If Tesla breaks below the low of the day and it continues to drop, we're going to see Tesla come to 240. If that fails us, it's going to come all the way down to 235, which is where the gap is. And it's also very close to where the 50 EMA is on the hourly time frame with the extended hours. This chart is without the extended hours, by the way. If we hold above this level, you're going to be watching these resistance levels right here. So right here, if Tesla does try to get a bounce, we're going to be watching it trying to hold above 244.5. If it breaks that, we're going to be watching 245.95. Break that, we have 247.5, basically. These are the zones where Tesla was shopping in for the majority of Friday. If it breaks 247.5, you can see 250. Now, because lots of shorts are piling into Tesla and because the market is showing some signs of maybe trading sideways as we're waiting for some data, the odds favor Tesla cooling off and coming down to fill the gap, but we have to watch for, watch for confirmation first. If 242 to 240 break, then Tesla will most likely fill the gap. If it holds that, then we don't have confirmation, so I'd be very, very careful. But for now, just be very patient, be calm, cool, and collected, and watch for confirmation. That is key. NEO is stuck between $8 and 7.5, going back and forth and back and forth. It's also stuck between uh, resistance at 7.97 to $8. If it breaks this, watch 8.2. If it breaks down, 7.5 is major support. It's basically stuck, so I'm going to be expecting a big move later on. Ford is holding up all right. Uh, I will talk about Netflix in a second, but just like Tesla, Ford got a nice bounce after the news came out. If Ford breaks below the support at 13.64, it's going to come all the way down to the lower 
uh, 13.5. So it breaks this low, it's basically going to come down to fill this gap. Odds favor that as we have a bearish cross on the PPO. But if it turns bullish, you're going to be watching resistance around 13.84. If it breaks that, it could get closer to 14. But for now, like I said, this is all very important. So watch these levels. Let me also add that uh, for Netflix, before I talk about the QQQ, it's at 420. That's the level I talked about. The next major level is like 426, basically. We're still stuck in the middle on Netflix. And if Netflix does cool off a little bit, you're going to be watching support at 416, 410, 404, then 403.94, basically, which is where the 50 is. And if you're bullish on it, you're going to be watching resistance very close to 420. Plus, we have 426, then potentially 430. If anything, it's very, very flat right now. We did get a bearish cross on the PPO, but we have to wait for the pre-market. Support is going to be closer to like this 410 area. So I'm going to be watching that very carefully. Netflix to me looks like it's losing some momentum and might slow down just a little bit, but we need to wait for confirmation in the morning. The odds favorite getting a retest of this like 416 first before it tries to hold. But I am seeing some sideways price, price action, excuse me, and a reaction at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern time. But the QQQ is looking a little bearish. We got this bearish cross right over here it looked like it hit this high level and started trending downwards but it's trying trying to hold above the 50. if the 50 breaks we're going to see this thing get closer to 350. if it manages to hold it we're just going to see lots of choppy price action until we get a very big reaction to the data that comes out at 11 a.m if we're bullish watch 355.5 then 356 if it breaks that 357.5 could come if it manages to hold above that above 357.5 to 357.66 it's going to come all the way up to 360. if it fails you know, and it starts coming down, watch support at 353, 352.5, and at those levels. So if those both fail us, it's going to come down to 349 to 350. Support and resistance are very important to look at and for confirmation. For now, it's just trading sideways. I am anticipating some sideways price action, maybe a little bit of bearish price action because of Tesla. But for now, just watch for a bigger reaction at 11 o'clock a.m. NASDAQ is still holding up. Uh, it did get a slowdown right up here on the hourly time frame on the PPO. We could just see the NASDAQ trade sideways until the data comes out, but it's getting closer to the 50 EMA. So watch that as major support. For resistance, watch this thing at 13,300. All right, for SPX, resistance is around 4,300, then 4,325, uh, basically. Around that zone right there. Those are some levels to watch for. If it comes down, major support is going to be closer to 42, uh, 4,275. Then we have 4,268 as major support. On the VIX, it's continuing to downtrend, but there is a bullish divergence, but there's no guarantee it's playing out just yet. Because it, it formed them before and it didn't really play out. Sometimes that happens, and that's because of the lack of confirmation, how much the market pumped. So, you know, they don't always play out, and we just have to wait for confirmation of the balance to get one. And so far, there's no confirmation yet. We're starting to look like we're curling on the VIX, but once again, the data matters so much more. So the data is going to dictate how the VIX moves. We have CPI and all those other things coming out. Uh, that is QQQ. Uh, we did form a bullish divergence. It could try to get a small balance here because of Tesla coming down, but you're going to be watching resistance at 22.73 and 22 flat. If it comes down, watch support at 21, followed by 20.5 and then 20 flat. Right now, it's just very, very flat, not really doing a whole lot, but I am anticipating maybe pushing out just a tiny bit to where this 22.74 level is. Uh, it could happen. Just watch it carefully. The dollar is starting to downtrend a little bit. Uh, on like the one hour, you could see it. The dollar is not giving us confirmation of the market continuing uh, to like drop or anything. It's just very flat, but it has been downtrending. Like if you look at this chart right here. So as the dollar continues to downtrend, we'll have to wait and see what happens with the CPI report and what the Fed says to dictate how the dollar moves. That's going to dictate the markets. For now, the dollar is suggesting the market's holding up. There's nothing new from it. Uh, for Coinbase, if we're bullish, watch 54. If it breaks and holds this, we have this imbalance closer to about 57. 56.97 to be exact. Uh, we're going to be watching that next and potentially this imbalance closer to 57. If it manages to break above the 50. If it breaks down, you're going to be watching 52.5 as support. If that fails, it's going to come all the way down to 50. Now, it is looking a little bit weaker right now because of what's happening with the NASDAQ. So it may downtrend and test this 52 area. Watch it carefully. If that fails us, it's going to come down to the lower 50s. For now, we need confirmation, but it's still looking a little weak as of right now. We have to wait and see how this opens in the pre-market. Uh, as far as Apple goes, Apple is still holding up. Uh, it's above 180. It may get a 50 EMA retest. I am seeing this potentially happening on the one-hour time frame. But 
and there was a bearish divergence here, but it's still looking decent. So I can see it coming down either during the pre-market or near open. Then we're going to get a big reaction to what the data tells us. Could get a nice bounce. If it bounces, you're going to be watching resistance around uh, the 180.95 area, 181.25, then 182.25 to 182.5. If it comes down, in order for it to turn bearish, you have to break below the 50. If it breaks down, it could be on its way to 70, 178. Sorry about that, 178. So I'm kind of in the middle with Apple, but I am anticipating it cooling up just a tiny bit before we get a big move depending on the data. For NVIDIA, we're in the middle too. I mean, if we're bearish, we're going to be watching 385. If that breaks, it's going to get closer to about 380 because there is a possible uh, formation there. I mean, some people could argue that there's like a head and shoulders developing. We have a bearish cross on the PPO. But if it bounces and manages to hold the 50, that's going to be your confirmation. So you need to hold the 50 EMA for the bulls to have an edge. If it breaks below it, that's going to be a bad sign. So far, it's just holding above it. So we don't have confirmation of it coming down just yet, even if the odds are favoring that. If it manages to hold the 50, it could get a bounce and make its way up to about 390. If it breaks that, it could get closer to 396. Right now, I'm just in the middle on the video. We're just going to see how it responds to the 50. The odds are favoring it cooling off a little bit, but that could all change depending on the data at 11 o'clock a.m. Same with Google. If Google is bullish, you're going to be watching 123.6, 124, and then 12, uh, I think 128 is going to come after that if it does break these levels after 125. If you're bearish, you're going to be watching this support down here closer to 122, then we have 120.75. We're in the middle with Google. Not a whole lot is going on. I just expect it to trade sideways until we get the big data. It may test this resistance first before it continues downwards. Uh, it is looking a little uh, weaker on the PPO, so it could come down to 122 first, but then we're going to get, get a we're going to excuse me get a big reaction after the data comes out. For the 10-year Treasury yield, very flat, not really doing anything, not really doing anything too significant. There was this inverse head and shoulder, but it's not really correlated with the market like before. There were times where this was pumping with the market, other times where it didn't do much. It is up, which tends to favor bears a little bit, but there's no confirmation yet. We got a bearish cross on the PPO on Amazon. It's just continuing to trade sideways. If we're bearish, you're going to be watching support at this 121.7 area. If that fails us, 120.63, then 120 are going to come. If you're bullish, you could argue that Amazon's going to make its way up above 123.8. If that holds, 125.79 is going to come, followed by 128. I'm in the middle with Amazon. I am anticipating it to maybe even cool off a little bit and get closer to 121. But here's the thing, it's going to depend heavily on the data that comes out at 11 a.m. And that could cause Amazon to make a big change. Watch for the inflationary data at 11 a.m. Eastern time. For Meta, we're sandwiched between the 50 and the 200. If you're bullish, you have to watch this thing hold above 265, which is where the 50 EMA is. If you're bearish, you're going to be watching 262 as support, which is where the 200 is. If that breaks, it's going to make its way down to 26 or even lower, down to like 258. I'm in the middle with Meta. Honestly, I'm in the middle. Uh, we have to watch which direction breaks, so it's likely going to trade sideways. And I think we're going to get a break depending on the data that comes out tomorrow. And also, it could depend later on even more on CPI and the Fed's policies. But until then, uh, the market looks like in may see lots of sideways prices, actually maybe a little bit of downside on tech, just a tiny little bit, not nothing too big, like a small drop, very something very minor, just you know, the market cooling off a tiny bit, uh, just for like the first hour or so. But then we're going to get a big reaction to this data. So we'll see what the data causes. The data could pump the markets. We could see tech make a U-turn and start pumping, or tech could slow down even more. We'll see what the inflationary expectations are tomorrow at 11 a.m. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next video coming out in the pre-market, and please remain calm, cool, and collected as much as you can. I have some merch if you're interested in buying anything, so thank you all so much if you do want to support the channel. If not, it's completely fine with me. And thank you all. Please have an absolutely spectacular day. Market to the moon as the long term is still incredibly bright despite all of the short-term fluctuations and get ready for the Fed and CPI and all this data coming out because it's going to have a big effect on the markets. Thank you. Get ready. Market to the moon and peace out.